Okay, so um, I uploaded a file, uh, the project to car animation dot blend. Uh, this will be uh, the working file that you have. Basically, it has the uh, ground right here, uh, traffic cone, and then the car and all the uh, objects that we'll use uh, for the accessory uh, for the car. Basically, a uh, a car controller. So this is the one that everything will be parented to. So when we move this car controller, it will move the entire car. Okay. We have another one right here, which is the tire rotation control. I put it down here because it's closer to the wheels. And when we rotate this, it will rotate the wheels uh, as if you're turning a steering wheel. Okay. And then the wheels, of course, will be rotated by the axle right here. Okay. So there's an axle right here that when we rotate that, uh, the tires need to be parented to that. Okay. So it's a simple setup, uh, but uh, we need to pay attention to the names and all the parts, basically. Okay. So um, first things first is that um, we want to make sure that when you uh, uh, finish the animation, that you will be rendering this the same way as before, exporting a QuickTime file, and the uh, rubric will be in the uh, homework section. Okay. So first, is let's uh, change our end time to 300 frames only. I have it on 500 here, uh, but I think that's a little too long. So we'll go with 300 frames so that now when we go to our um, output section, the frame start and end start is 300. We can adjust that later. We can make it longer or shorter, but for now it's 300 frames. Okay. Another thing is that we want to make sure that even though I already checked everything here, that the ambient, ambient occlusion bloom and the space reflection for EV recording, EV engine, sorry, are turned on, which they are uh, if you didn't mess with the file, okay? Also here, it's just gonna be rendering in 1920 by 1080. All right, so let's get started. Um, we want this car to follow a path and then uh, that will be its, uh, its animation uh, moving forward, right? Um, however, the design of the car is very stylized, so we need to add some elements here that make it kind of like it moves a little cartoony, right? So um, uh, we'll uh, set it up first and then we'll, we'll get to the animation part, okay? So uh, none, uh, there's nothing here that's parented, okay? Everything here is still uh, uh, separate pieces. Um, I also have the object's rotation axis or um, uh, axis uh, uh, displayed and you do that by selecting the object. Go to the object property right here and then under a viewport display I have the name um, to show up and then the axis as well. All right, that's just to kind of show us the uh, the uh, rotation and we could see those things that really are animated easily if this is bothering you like there's so much information up here and you're fine with just looking at the uh, outliner with what you have selected you can turn this off by again any object that you have selected go to the object property tab go to viewport display and then uncheck name and access and then they'll go away but i'm going to leave them on for this demo okay so first things first is that uh, let's set up the back wheels right here. Okay, so we need the tire uh, rear driver and passenger and we need the uh, the axle right here. Okay, so we got those three. I'm going to turn on my screen cast right here so that we could see that going. Okay, I'm going to uh, click the forward slash to isolate those three. Okay, so forward slash just kind of isolate uh, those three. I'm in the animation tab as well. Okay. All right. So um, what we want is for these two tires to be parented to the axle right here so that when we animate the axle right here, they both follow, right? So to do that uh, from the previous lesson, all we have to do is select the axle last, right? So shift select both tires and then last shift click the axle right here. And then we do control P and then set parent to object. All right. By doing that, Whenever we do any uh, motion to this, the other two follows now. And more importantly, of course, the rotation. Okay, 
So by doing that, we are now able to control both wheels by simply um, rotating uh, the axle right here. All right, so I'm gonna go forward slash again right here. I'm gonna select the front uh, two wheels and then the axle also. Let me turn, uh, hide the ground for now, okay? Uh, what else are we gonna hide here? Let's hide the camera for now and the light as well, okay? So this is all we see for now. All right, so those uh, tires and then the axle right there, which is the uh, front axle right here. So forward slash to isolate those. We'll do the exact same thing. Select both of these and then shift click the axle, the front one. Control P, last. So you always want to select the parent last object just to check right here. R, X on that one and rotates the... Uh, the wheels so you can see here by showing the axis we could easily see that those black tires are spinning uh, because um, they're kind of hard to see that they have motion sometimes and uh, this is a dead giveaway that they are actually rotating okay so those are set so all we did is parent the tires to the axle okay all right next is that the axle now uh, both axles right here uh, we want them independent from the camera, uh, from the uh, car body right here, okay? Because if we animate the body kind of going like this, um, what's going to happen is that uh, if the axles are parented to the body, they will also move like that. So we want the body independent of the wheels. Uh, so that kind of gives it like a suspension. We could do some suspension animation, kind of exaggerated animation, especially with the cartoony look of this car. Right, so um, the uh, the car will be uh, the body. Sorry, uh, will be by itself. Okay, and last is this one right here, which is the uh, tire rotation controller. Uh, we'll set this up so that the uh, uh, we can turn the wheels as if we're turning it like a steering wheel, not rotating them. Okay, like when you're rotating your steering wheel, we can uh, you know we we can turn uh, the car. Okay. All right, so, uh, and then we'll parent those as we need the animation to go in there, okay? So first things first, uh, let's uh, isolate the uh, the wheel right here and the front axle, okay? Forward slash, and let's animate this one. So I'm gonna go to the uh, uh, right viewport here, okay? Like so, and then the front axle is all I need to select right here. So it is selected. So what we want to do for this one is just kind of rotate this, okay? And I re uh, I um, resetted all the deltas and transform for this one. So each object here would have a value of zero 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 on location rotation. Uh, so you know it's all set for you guys. All right. So there it is. Uh, let's animate this kind of spinning, okay? So um, the rotation for this will be the x axis. So if I rotate that, that's where it's kind of positive degree gives it a rotate forward so the car can actually move forward okay so on frame one we're going to uh, let me uh, zoom in on my timeline here so we can see a little bit of uh, precision on that one maybe right there one through uh, 20 okay so X rotation I'm going to insert the single keyframe on that one and then let's say for now uh, we go, um, I don't know, frame, uh, let's say we go frame 30, okay? I go positive 359 degrees, okay? And then insert single keyframe. So we just have this car kind of moving forward. All right. Thing with that is it has principles of animation of slow in and slow out we need to eliminate those now because we know for a fact that we don't want this thing kind of each time it does a rotation on the tire you don't want it kind of like someone slamming on the brakes and then or uh, you know easing on the brakes we just want it consistent right so to do that to show it visually we could actually do it here without going through there but let's go here and go to the uh, graph editor so again previous lessons Okay, I'm gonna press dot on the numpad to show all, okay, to show both. But they're both selected right there. You can press A to make sure that everything is selected. Okay, and then press V as in victory. 
and then just make it vector. Okay, so now it's a straight line or slant and there's no slow in and slow out. I'm gonna go back to my dope sheet here. So again, this is from previous lesson, okay? Nothing new here. All right, so now it's just consistent rotating uh, without any ease in and ease out. All right, so what we want from this is we might actually change this later on, but for now, uh, what we want to do is cycle that, okay? Uh, from your previous lesson with the Coke can jump, uh, the uh, fourth video there, uh, um, showed, I showed you how to do your cycle. So we just want this cycling so that it just keeps cycling forever and uh, we don't have to animate the rotation of the tire, uh, eliminating the counter animation, okay? So what we can do is um, while the Euler rotation selected, okay? Uh, you can do shift E, shift and then E uh, while you're in the timeline right here. I think on the previous lesson I showed you how to do it using the uh, modifier, but this is the shortcut. It does the same thing. Make sure that what you want to cycle is selected, okay? Those keys are selected right there, okay? And I'm going to click on shift E while my cursor is in the timeline and then make cyclic all right so if I do this it adds a cycle modifier to it and this thing just keeps on rotating past 30 so you can see uh, we're beyond 30 and it's just rotating by itself all right which is what we want okay to show you real quick what that looks like in the graph editor as you can see right here this is all I've animated 1 through 30 and then since we added that cycle, it just keeps repeating that and it's slanted like this because we changed it to vector. Okay, so now that that thing is done, we can apply the exact same thing with the back tires. However, there's a quicker way of doing that. We're gonna to introduce to you some uh, new constraint uh, modifiers. Okay, I'm gonna switch it back to dope sheets right there. All right, so let's reveal the other one. So I'm going to uh, uh, forward slash here so we get to see the other ones. So, all right, so I want to see all this, same tires and the axle. Oh, not that one. There we go. Forward slash, so all we see is this, okay? Make sure that I'm on frame one right here. I'm on the original location. All right, so... Uh, if we were to do this, I can just repeat all that, step, copy and paste it, but let's introduce something new here. Okay, so uh, again, we animated the axle, the front one, so the back axle right here, the rear axle, we can apply a constraint to this. So while this thing is selected, go to this icon right here, Object Constraint Properties. Okay, this one right here. I'm going to add a copy of rotation. So basically, we're going to copy the rotation of the front axle and it will do the exact same thing. So if I do that, copy of rotation, okay? So again, I apply this to the rear, not to the front. The front is, there's no, there's nothing to it, right? It's just the cycle. So this is the rear axle. And then it says copy of rotation. What are we copying? I'm going to click on the eyedropper right here and I can click and then click this front axle okay you can also click here to do a drop list so front axle right there and we just want the z-axis rotation on that one let's see actually we don't even need to do anything with this because uh, uh, we're not limiting it it's just copying it uh, rotating we'll need to do that for the front wheel all right so you can see right here that those tires are spinning and all we animated is the front uh, axle right there and then all these things are happening right now so you just leave everything as default here and then that's it so if I go reveal everything we got the wheels turning right now okay all right so um, let's do another uh, setup right here while we're at the object constraint property okay so let me go back to here uh, let's uh, just select the wheels, front wheels, front axle, and this circle right here called tire rotation control. 
Okay, I'm gonna do forward slash, so four items are revealed, right? So now this is just kinda, it just keeps kinda spinning like so, okay? However, uh, when we want to turn the steering wheel, uh, we can't kind of do that because uh, these things are already spinning because if I have my rotation right here and then we let's say we do a Z axis okay our Z they will they will go kind of crazy like so because they're already spinning on this position and the Z axis uh, global um, you know it, it will change it because it's spinning to its uh, local axis being driven by this axle right here. So what we can do here is do the exact same thing we did with the axles. All right, so this one right here, we can rotate this kind of like so along the Z axis, okay? And then we'll just make this tire copy the rotation of that, okay? So we'll add constraint also on the uh, uh, front passenger and front driver tire okay so select this one we're gonna do a copy rotation okay and then we're gonna copy this tire rotation okay and i'm gonna be on frame one right select this one do the same thing copy a rotation we're copying this one right here all right however when i rotate this this will not even move Okay, and kind of lost the, uh, because the copy of rotation on this is on X, Y, and we just want Z axis. So when um, when you select one of the tires and you're in the copy of rotation, turn off X and Y, that way it can rotate, okay? We'll do the exact same thing for this tire right here. Turn off X and Y as well. Only Z remains, and watch this one right here. So while those things are spinning, we can now rotate this uh, tire rotation controller and we can turn. If you animate it on the z-axis, you can turn the car, okay? Doesn't look too good there because there's no differential here. There's really no uh, suspension, right? So just don't look at that contraption right there when it collapses. Not gonna see that anyway under the car. But anyway, Kind of cool now, it's rotating. And then if I do RZ to rotate that, so we can turn the wheels while they're spinning. Okay, so the car is almost ready for um, its uh, main voyage right here. So and go like so, okay. And then RZ. All right. We can even put uh, rotation limit on that one so that it doesn't collide with the car. But uh, we don't need to, so just don't do too crazy of an animation like this. And you don't want to be doing this also, not unless you have the uh, the latest Hummer where it can't slide out of a park tight parking space, okay? So we're only doing it for the front, but if you want to do it for the back, for futuristic, kind of like the Batmobile, you can definitely do that, just copy those rotation, okay? So that uh, constraint is, uh, really cool, um, you know, simple copy rotation and you're able to do a lot of things with it, um, you know, and simplifies the animations. You can see we've only animated one thing here, rotated this um, uh, axle, okay? 1 to 30, 0 359 degree, and everything else is just cycle and copy rotation. And look, we got this whole thing kind of going, okay? All right, one last thing before we will apply the path for the animation is so let's add some character to this body right here, okay? Uh, I know it's kind of cartoony, uh, so let's just add kind of like a little bit of kind of going up and down like so, and we'll cycle that. And you can do that also with a noise. You can kind of randomize it, but uh, since we're in the lesson of cycle, let's do the cycle, okay? so. Let's animate the body going kind of up and down and maybe even rotation. So let's see here. If we do rotate, yeah, we can kind of probably do a little bit of kind of like the engine is really rocking the body, kind of like that, okay? So um, it's probably going to be quick animations for this one. So 
we're animating the z-axis, right? So on frame one, uh, zero on z, insert single keyframe, and then we'll go, let's say, uh, three frames. I'll go, or four frames, let's see, maybe three frames. We'll go up a bit. This is slight. I'm on point zero three, okay? On frame three and then insert single keyframe and then when we go to six, we go zero height, insert single keyframe. So it just have this kind of really tiny little, okay? So what we'll do is while the location is selected, we'll cycle that going up and down. Same thing how we did the front axle. Shift E, okay? Shift E is the way to do it, but if you want to do it the uh, old way, like what we did last time, you press N right here, modifier, I'd add cycles, it'll do the exact same thing, okay? Uh, but let's just kind of simplify it, okay? Shift E, make cyclic, so now this thing is just kind of going up and down like so, okay? A sip, it's a bumpy road or a really bad suspension, okay? And you can make it more kind of drastic if you go to the graph editor. And I'm going to press dot here too. All right, so let's say you want it um, fast right here. Fast over there. I doubt we'll really see the effect, but... So it has more like a bounce now. So going back to the bouncing ball lesson. Okay, so I just kind of reverse that. So fast, slow, fast. So now it's a little bit more bouncy. Okay. All right. Let's do some, um, let's see if uh, rotation would do it any good. All right. So I'm going to rotate along the X. Maybe just kind of rock it like that. Okay, so on frame one, zero rotation on the X, insert single keyframe. Okay, and then we'll go to frame, let's say four. We'll give it, uh, oh, not that one, going this way. Just a slight one, maybe negative 0.2. Then on, Z, on six, back to oh, zero again. Basically remove the rotation. Okay, and let's see. All right, I don't know if that's any good, but uh, let's go here. Select the rotation, make sure it's selected. Okay. And then, uh, okay, select it like so. And Shift E, make cyclic. So now even the rotation, uh, yeah, we'll keep it. I mean, it. I could barely kind of, it's kind of just rotating a little bit. So it added to it. So looking at it like so, there's our car. It looks like it's bubbling along, you know. All right. So we'll stop the animation, uh, the playback right here, and then let's set this up. So right now, everything here is still not parented other than the tires, right? So we want the body with the body selected. We want to shift click the main car controller right here, which is the big circle. Okay, control P, set to parent object. All right, so let's just do a test. If I move this one, uh, the body follows, all right? Uh, another one is that uh, we want the tire, the axle, sorry, this axle and that axle, okay? And the, uh, the main controller as well. I mean the tire rotation control to steer it, okay? Right here and shift click this one the main one so axle axle at the uh, tire rotation shift click the big circle control P object so this is now the main uh, uh, object that controls the car all right so we can play that and then we you know whatever we do with this one it animates that so on and so forth okay so now the car is set all we have to do now is learn the um, uh, the pat animation right and then 
uh, again uh, go to the week 8 video lesson uh, how to si uh, how to uh, manipulate and create curves okay very important you do it in a flat viewport okay so I will make sure the ground is showing up here okay uh, so we could see it so we're not under or over the ground above ground okay and let uh, me go to number seven here or until they go to the top viewport so we're seeing everything flat okay uh, we can uh, set the car back right here it's in the middle so I can move the car back right here okay and you have your traffic cone you guys can do whatever you want with that later uh, the camera right here let me go uh, go to my view camera view make sure it's I can zoom out here as well so we can see it like so for now okay all right so I moved the car back okay uh, let me create the uh, I'm gonna go to wireframe mode so we can see it okay I'm gonna go to add curve I'm gonna click on path okay when you click on path right here it creates this line but when I hit tab to go edit mode it has like a four points okay so what I want to do with this one is kind of rotate it so it's straight um, along the y-axis right here so I'm gonna go R 90 r90 press enter okay and what i want is to move this i'm in object mode until it's at the position of the car okay kind of like so all right let's see what that looks like right there and uh, we want to lower this i'm going to go to the side viewport here i want to lower it so that it's the same height of the uh, the main car controller. Okay. Oops, sorry. Okay, we'll move it here a little bit forward. Okay, it's right there. Okay. So it's just at the front of the car, same height as the uh, car controller. Okay. I'm gonna go back to the top viewport. I will change the. Uh, the uh, shape of that one or add to it so I'm gonna click tab I have the nerves pad right here so let's rename this now this is the motion pad okay that's basically what the car is gonna follow so I'm gonna hit tab okay go to edit mode and I'm just gonna select the first point right there okay and then I'm going to press E to extrude okay and I can keep this straight right here so I'm gonna right click cancel that and then just kind of move it like so okay so at least we get kind of like a straight line right here and then what I'll do is press E and kind of extruding this and this is where the car will travel so that's why probably we need more than 300 frames but for our exercise and for the sake of not using too many pylons or traffic cone, that's what I'm just gonna do. And you can edit this after if you're not happy with your shape. And I'm again, I'm in the top viewport right here. So meaning whatever I manipulate here, this thing's gonna be flat still, and it's not gonna have any issues with uh, uh, it going up and down. Because if you manipulate this, you're in 3D like this, when you move stuff, that can go up like that, and then your car will go up, okay? All right, so that's our pad right there, okay? And uh, uh, we're ready for the next step. Okay, so again, the car is ready, okay? The car is ready. When I press the space bar, we got the wheels rotating and then the body is moving and we just need to uh, create the motion pad, okay? So that's pretty easy to do. Uh, so select the main body controller of the car. Uh, let's make sure the ground right here is unchecked on the selectability so we didn't accidentally select it. Uh, the traffic cone, uh, well, we, we can leave that alone. It's right there. We can, okay, so right here, we'll select the body. I mean the main car controller. Shift click the motion pad. 
So you're selecting the motion pad last because it'll be kind of like parenting. So control P, you have two options here. One is follow path, which we'll be using. And then the other one is path constraint. Path constraint is when you want to animate the car to a specific time along the path, okay? So this will be the more uh, interactive version. Follow path, it just goes through the entire curve, okay? Which is what we want and what's needed for this project. If you want to uh, be adventurous, you can go into the path constraint and you can look up some lessons on that one. But what we're doing for now is follow pad, and this will be the same uh, week eight video lessons with the UFO and um, the uh, airplane on those video lessons. Okay, follow pad. I'm gonna click it. As you can see, nothing looks like happened. Okay, we have the uh, we put the uh, line. Remember the pad kind of centered to the car right there. So when I tap the space bar now, okay, car went nuts <laughs> all right so we want that back right here so now let's take a look at the uh, car pad right here okay uh, the pad right here uh, we want to make sure that when we select the uh, uh, when we have the pad selected we're going to go to the curve property right here okay so and you're in object mode select this one and then we need to be in the pad animation okay so um, right now let's take a look at the uh, the direction of the curve okay the direction of the curve you can uh, show the uh, normals of that if you go here in the overlay okay and then um, we'll see our uh, okay I need to be in uh, yeah I need to be in edit mode first okay so if I go to uh, edit mode, okay, I'm going to go here in the overlay, click this down, and then we can click normals right here. All right, so it's showing that it's going forward, okay. There we go. All right, okay, it should work now. Um, uh, I think uh, I have something selected when we played it first, but. It should just go like so. I just want to make sure that uh, I'm going to turn that off. All right, and it just took off because uh, by default, it's only set uh, to run at 100 frames. Okay, so if I select the, uh, the, the uh, pad right here, all right, so you can see the only frames is 100. So if we want this car to run the entire thing for let's say 250 frames all we have to do is select the path change the frames to 250 frames it will then readjust the car and it's now running the entire curve at 250 frames so what happened there it's it's now slower okay because it used to do the entire thing at uh, at the uh, 100 now it's uh, 250 all right and then finally we'll change that to 300 which is the same length as the length of your animation right here and there it is by default I think follow is not check follow simply means uh, let's uncheck it okay uh, when follow is not turned on the orientation is not following the curves you can see here it looks like it's sliding it's like drifting Okay. When you click follow, your object simply follows. It's not the car that's following. Remember, we applied that to the to the circle right here. Okay, and as you can see, it's following it. All right. So 300 frames. Let's take a look at the wheels. If they're not sliding. Okay. Let's take a look. Eh, probably not bad kind of hard to see though okay but you can select the remember the front axle is the one responsible for rotating all the wheels so if you select this and you want it to spin faster 
Remember, this is on cycle. So if you want it to spin a little faster, you shorten your animation by selecting the frame 30 key, press G, and moving it. Let's say we go frame 25. So now they spin a lot faster. Okay, you have to see, I think 30 is good for 300 frames with the amount of. So let's say you guys went crazy with your pad. So it'll take it a long time, you know, you might need 500 frames for it. But the thing that you have to remember is that uh, you don't want your wheels kind of sliding. Uh, you know, we're cheating here. The rotation, the diameter, the circumference of the wheel is not matching this, uh, the, uh, the position going forward, okay? It's just kind of like an optical illusion that that thing is spinning, okay? So what else do we need to do here, okay? So let me go to uh, frame one here. Uh, remember, we have the, uh, uh, the wheel controller, right? So let's make sure we grab that one right there. Let's go to the rotation right here. So if we scrub our animation. Um, actually, let's hide the uh, ground. Okay, I'm going to go to the bottom. Okay, so I could see, oops, sorry. Bottom right there. All right, you could see the path. So when you scrub, uh, let's turn that off. Right here, you want your wheels to be turning. Okay kind of follow that so that's the start of the curvature right here all the way to there so I'm gonna keyframe this one so the z-axis for the uh, tire rotation is what we're controlling that controls the wheels so right here I'm gonna keyframe z uh, at zero okay I'm gonna single keyframe okay and then once it hits that I guess in the middle of that curve, I'm going to uh, add a rotation going that way. Okay, so now it's turning the wheels. Okay, and then by the time it hits this kind of straight line right there, we'll put it back to zero. Okay, so it just adds some you know a little bit of animation to the wheels as if you, if you have your steering wheel in all right so right here you see it okay the wheels are turning right there so it doesn't look like it's sliding all right let me finish that uh, let me go to uh, the bottom again and uh, let's find the other uh, situation where we can animate it here a little bit i would say around here keyframe at zero go right there give it a little bit like so maybe well right here just a little bit okay and it's doing that then here maybe a lot make sure it doesn't collide you don't want to do it too much with the wheel will go inside the body Right there, and it's just okay. And right there, no, not yet. Maybe right there, we can start uh, put that to zero right here. So all the turning happened right there. Okay, and then go straight, and then one more turn right here. Maybe right there. Animate at zero here. Here at the main curb. All right, like that. And then finally along the 
straight line right there, put it back to zero, keyframe it, okay, and there you go. All right, the animation is all done, so let's take a look. I'm going to turn on the ground also. Take a look. All right. So now, uh, what can you do with a cone? Um, you, you know, just have fun with this. You can uh, put it all on one side, like so. All right, and then what you can do with this is uh, uh, you can put it on an array, you know. You can add an array right here, and we can tell it to uh, is it a y axis? Yeah, so zero on the x, and you can go, you increase the count, and you can also tell it to uh, what was it? Was it curve? I think so curve and follow this curve right here okay and then you just just kind of follows the uh, there we go so at least on one side and strictly optional you know you don't need to do any of this but it just kind of gives it a, a little bit more kind of dimension you can see right here it looks like uh, you know, you can't drive on or past this side right here. Okay, you can do that. And uh, what else can we do here? Uh, we can add another camera. So you guys can do uh, another uh, um, output uh, so that we just don't see it like this, kind of like it's um, <laughs> you're on the DMV and you're doing your driving lesson. Um, if I get a camera here, Okay, and there's the camera. Uh, let me see what that camera looks like. We'll go press uh, zero. Okay, and then if I want to jump to that camera to be the default camera, uh, I can click this one. So it switches to whatever that camera is seeing. So let me uh, control that camera right now. Uh, let's see. Okay, so I'm controlling that camera. Uh, let me just kind of grab it here and then just put it close to that one. And let's bring it down. So, all right, so here I can kind of go like so. Like a drone shot following it. Okay, let's go maybe that one right there. And then what can we do with this? Um, exact same thing uh, as we did with the body of the camera. I'm going to select the camera, shift click the path, uh, or, or I can just parent it to this uh, to this uh, ring right here. So select the ring, select the camera first, then shift click the uh, car controller, control P, object, and that thing is stuck to that. So while it's following it here, you can see right here it looks like you have a camera person and another car following it it looks a little stiff because we're not animating that thing um, going positions but it follows it right there so that can be your second camera angle if you want to and to switch between cameras uh, we this camera is hidden in the uh, uh, motion pad right now because it all got kind of uh, truncated there okay but if you open it like this you'll see the camera right there and you can switch between the top camera and then the new camera that was made and have fun having multiple cameras you can even put a camera inside okay uh, let's do that 
at another camera okay, or like a dash cam camera let's go back to frame one that's when we know it's at the beginning right there let me move this camera right there rotate it so it's and then let's take a look what it looks like oh it's looking at the ground okay. All right, there it is. So if I control that camera, you can put it in the back like this, kind of like a racing game. But we can also put that inside the driver's seat right there. That's what it looks like inside right there. We can parent this to the uh, ring again. And then when we play that, actually, we want to make sure it goes like this because that's the frame right there okay right there so you have to see where the car is driving you can put stuff here you can put boxes and whatnot or your other model so there's obstacle on the road so it doesn't look so empty all right that way uh, you can do that and again to switch to different cameras all you have to do is select that icon right there and switches to that and that's what gets rendered by the way Okay, so if you want to, when you render the first one, let's say, just to submit, you know, satisfy the project, and you have to submit your Blender file, all right, and uh, that way, um, you know, you got your basis covered, and then um, you can add, uh, and then you can switch to this camera right here and then do another render animation and it will render that camera and so on and so forth okay and that's what you need for the uh, project to submission